If New York is the melting pot, then Fish City can only be described as the Booyah base. Trust me, being a good cop in a bad town can be murder. <coughs> See what I tell you. That's me, Inspector Gill. No, no, over here. I said Inspector Gill, not inspect her gills. I'm a cop who's a carp. Okay, Fish City may be a crime-ridden, polluted, lousy place to live, but on the other fin, it's home. Hey, can I get a Yuck, murder stinks. Of course, fish around here aren't too fragrant when they're alive. Hey, Doc Kroger, looks like this pile of protein gives new meaning to the words, hit the streets. Yeah, but first he gave new meaning to the words, hit with a brick, a table, a lead pipe, and oh yeah, a slug from a 32 automatic. So, you suspect foul play? No, natural causes. Wait, wait, we gotta get a positive ID from the widow first. Well, what do you know? Angel. Who needs a widow when you got a dame who can ID any guy in town? Even though the corpse du jour was pretty well filleted, I recognized it as Clam's Casino. <gasps> Apparently, I wasn't the only one. A great detective once said, She's the kind of fish you took home to Mother. And if Mother didn't like her, the hell with Mother. Angel used to work for me, sort of a fish Friday. But trust me, she always had plenty left over for Saturday and Sunday. Angel, a tear? What gives? Usually Angel. If you ask me... Which nobody did. Calamari's in on it somehow. Slimy invertebrate hay, his kind of turning this city into a cesspool. I say you take that eight-legged suction cup downtown and you grill them. Crab, we are downtown. Stupid flounder, flathead. Hey, I'm Park Legal here. Get your eyes on both sides of your head, would you? Jeez. Tad. I'll need I lifted prints, prints on the, from the brick, brick table, table and lead pipe, pipe and, and see if you can get a lead on the 32, 32 automatic. Go. Well, well, if it isn't Muscles Marinara, how's my favorite brain donor? Uh, your favorite? Oh, uh, Gil, you move me. A crane couldn't move you. Look, Barnacle Butt, if you know what's good for you, you'll tell your boss, Calamari, to come down to the station for a little questioning. Hello. Sandy, do you see what I see? Fin prints. I'd say they belong to a female 52 years old, slightly overweight, tall brunette, wearing a green dress with puce buttons. Tad! Why don't you scoop, scoop up, up the sand? sand? Good thinking, sir. I had evidence, but I could sure use a witness. Pity. We seem to have a bit of a problem with our bartender, Larry. Catch his claw in the tail again? No. Unfortunately, he was an uninvited guest at this evening's clam bake, if you get my drift. You want I should ice him? No. I think the boiling water would be a bit more permanent. Let's not forget the melted butter. You got it? This place belongs to Pearl. She's smart, that's good. She wants a husband, that's bad. She's ambitious, that's good, but she wants me, and that's bad. I want her too, that's good, but not permanently, and that's the way it is, at least for now. What? Nothing. Nothing, Gil. 
every morning for five years. You come in here, you order your usual cup of coffee, black, then you ask for cream and sugar. You call your mother every Thursday, except you do it on Friday. And your favorite color is red, but you wear nothing but beige. I know everything there is to know about you. It's getting to be a chronic condition. Pearl, honey, sweetie, doll, babe, you know how I feel about you. How? 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 Why do you talk like that? Because all the great couples talk like that. Uh, Fred and Wilma, Kermit and Miss Piggy, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Next time, get out of the way a little faster, you stupid low-life squid! Hey, make sure you get all that ink off my windshield! How does he stay so cheery? High-fiber diet. Crab, you always have an opinion. What do you think about that? If I thought about that, I wouldn't be able to walk sideways for a month. It says here, 20 years ago, this Clams Casino guy run a small-time racket with our favorite octopus, Calamari. Calamari's a squid crab. Squid, octopus, they all look alike to me. I'll bet my shell that bag of veins Calamari's got something to do with this murder thing. Tell me something I don't know. You got a cornflake in your teeth. You think Angel is involved? Do I hate my ex-wife? Look, I know you and this Fin Fei Tao go way back. But just the way she swished past Casino's body did it for me. Angel could be completely innocent. Not since she was 14. Come on, Pearl. When Angel worked for me, she just hit a nerve. Gee, let me guess which one. Pearl, I've told you a million times, Angel and I are just friends, pals, buddies, amigos. Then what are we? Oops, gotta go. Got a date with a murder. Hey, maybe I'll come with you. I mean, what if you need another brain? Thanks, but I have a snail on call. Goldie speaking. How may I be of service? What makes you think your husband's dead? You got into bed and there was no response. Oh, sweetheart, we're gonna need more than that. I tell you what, reach for his wallet. If he doesn't move, you're a widow. My pleasure. Goldie! Psst. Who do you like in the seventh? Nobody. That Tad kid isn't back with my racing form yet. Detective Catfish, is that your latest disguise from Get Ups To Go? No one will ever recognize you, sir. Ta-da! You are the best undercover cop on the force. Dorsal kisser. Morning, Chief. You want to see me? Inspector Gill. How nice of you to join us. Sleep well last night? Like a guppy, Chief. Here, let me help you with that. So, how's the family? They're well. Good, good. Gill, it's not just that we have maniacs out there murdering innocent fish, or the fact that the entire city is depending on you doing your job. It's more that if you come in late one more time, you're gonna make me cranky. My wife doesn't like me being cranky. My kids don't like me being cranky. And I'll bet your co-workers don't like me being cranky. Co-workers? No, we don't like you being cranky. Am I making myself clear? Loud, not clear. Good, good. I could sure use some coffee. Make mine black. You really love it here, don't you? Only every minute of the day. How do you do that? Do what, sir? Forget it. I do me a favor and try to find the Clams Casino, Casino murder, murder file. file. How does he do that? Whoa. Angel's prints were found on the brick that killed Clams, on the table that killed Clams, on the lead pipe that killed Clams, and on the gun that killed Clams. You want my professional police opinion? She killed Clams. Am I the only one around here who thinks Angel isn't guilty? Yeah, you are. All we're suggesting is that you come up for air. 
Look, Chowderhead, Angel and I are just friends, pals, buddies, amigos. Low tide. Chief, how should I say this? Something is about to ooze into your office. What can I do for you, Calamari? No, 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 Chief Abalone, it's what I can do for you. I had an inkling you'd show up. I extended such a pleasant invitation, I couldn't be rude. Now that we're all clear on the etiquette, why don't you tell us what you know about your dead ex-partner? I prefer to wait for my lawyer. Nice thread, Sharkster. Is that your lawsuit? Let's get down to business. Is my client going to be officially charged? Why, are his batteries low? Uh, you don't like me very much, do you? Actually, I don't like you at all. Calamari, it's obvious you didn't come here to confess. Look closely at Angel's earrings. From now on, they will be referred to as Exhibit A. I believe you found one of them at the murder scene. How do you know what we found? Uh, by playing detective. Detective. Inspector. Congratulations. I'll send fruit. I gave those earrings to Angel after one particularly charming night. Thanks for sharing that with us. We're merely trying to help all the facts float to the surface. You know where to find me. Yeah, under a rock. Can you believe that clump of flotsam? I believe this earring. Can't you smell it? Somebody's trying to stick it to Angel. So what else is new? Chief, you gotta give me 24 hours to prove Angel's not guilty. I don't gotta do nothing. We've got a file full of blueprints, and now this earring. But I have new evidence. Grains of sand? Prints on, uh, grains of sand. A 52-year-old female, tall brunette, slightly overweight, green dress with puce buttons. Now it's a 55-year-old, slightly overweight police chief who has a tendency to be cranky. As far as I'm concerned, we've hooked our fish. Now reel her in. But now! investigation of yours is stowing up quite a tidal wave. Really? What is the scoop from the bottom of the food chain? Why it is Angel Pinkdom. I thought I smelled a cop in here. I can't watch this. Funny, no one's ever said that to me before. Are you here to arrest me? Well, it's hard to argue with an earring that fits like a glove. So, I misplaced a trinket. It's not what you misplaced, it's where you misplaced it. Let's not talk here. There's a booth in the back, in the corner, in the dark. Go. I may have a voice husky enough to pull a dog sled, but I didn't kill clams. I swear it. Is this a snow job, Angel? I thought we were friends. We are, but I can't help you if you tie my fins. You used to like that. She's kidding. Sometimes a carp's got to do what a carp's got to do, but a carp don't got to like it. Angel, is crime boss Calamari involved with you in this? Miguel, I'm not bad. I'm good. Very good. Sandy, 
Unless I can find the fish that made those prints, I'm afraid that Angel's looking at 30 years of license plates, dishpan fins, and cellmates named Big Marge and Little Spike. I tossed, I turned, tormented. It was terrible. Talk about torture. Angel spoke 18 languages and couldn't say no in any of them. I needed to find some answers. So I contacted all my usual snitches. Hey, what do you hear about Angel and Clan's casino? And some of my unusual snitches. So this is a cop that's caring. No, the herring's not good. No, I, didn't I didn't say herring. I said caring. What's oh, the matter no. with you? Don't you, you hear said anything herring. I say? You didn't say Listen, herring. Listen, the last time you Every day cars, you tell me something. I give you an ace. You say to me. What's the matter with herring? The Widow Casino, of course. Goldie, Goldie, Goldie. Do you have a booking on a psychic? When I hear something from the seahorse's mouth, I like to pass it on to my best customer. Hey. Louie, the last time I trusted the sure thing, I ended up with a condo in Atlantis that I still can't find. Tad, do I we have a file on the, on the Widow, Widow Casino? Casino? Tall, Tall brunette, white hair, green blue dress, suit, no buttons. buttons, right? Wrong, uh, sir. But she is female. I knew it. Room 407, please. Yeah, I'll hold. Oh, by the way, Pearl called. Pearl? You remember Pearl, the one you haven't married yet? Oh, look who's talking. Why don't you take the plunge again? Oh, honey, after the fifth Mr. Wright, I just can't say, no, really, it was great with a straight face anymore. Yeah, I'm still here. Thanks. Hello? Our deal's off. <laughs> You can't do this, Calamari! Oh, but I'm afraid I can. Well, you, you won't get away with it. I'll, I'll... You'll come get me? Goodbye, Mrs. Casino. Do keep in touch. Yes! I knew it. I knew it. Angel didn't do it. Well, at least not in the last 20 minutes. Go check the doors and bring me another espresso. If it isn't the Widow Casino. Oh, I should have known you couldn't be trusted. And don't you think it's a little late for that? Late? Tardy, maybe. My husband is late. Yes, my ex-partner is pushing up seaweed. Thank you. Thank you? I kill my husband and that's it? Thank you? I apologize. I thought a ticket tape parade seemed like an overkill. You set me up. Oh, really? I merely mentioned in passing that your husband and Angel were seeing entirely too much of each other. You're the one who pulled the trigger, my dear. My tentacles are clean. Oh, no. No, no, you're not getting off that easy. I want my husband's half of the shell shack. Oh, what's this ocean coming to when there's no honor among lowlifes? <laughs> Honor? Then you must be the one who promised to love, honor, and obludgeon your husband. For 20 years, I went to that jail. I made an Argyle scarf. I made Danish. All Angel ever made was him. My dear widow Casino, in about two seconds, a large brown creature with shoulders in two different time zones will be coming around the corner with my espresso. Tisk tisk. Calamari, don't you know caffeine is bad for your health? Damn, I hate risking my life for an unevolved species. Didn't 
didn't you just fall out the window? Yeah. Luckily, your car broke my fall. Ah, uh, thanks, kid. No thanks necessary, ah, uh, sir. I find myself in the unappetizing position of having to thank you. Save it. I know you were in on all this, but one day, you're gonna slip up and I'll be there. Gosh, boss. The water fight. Thank you for believing I was innocent. Hey, I never believed you were innocent, Angel. I just knew you weren't guilty. I merely baited a hook. I'm just glad the Widow Casino took it. And I'm glad I got my job back. I've been wondering about that. I know it's hard to understand, Gil, but Calamari is my friend. Maybe you'd better look for some new friends. <sighs> mm. Thanks. Well, this is where I get off. Angel, I've been trying to convince these folks all night long. We're just friends, pals, buddies, amigos. I mean, we're here. My apartment. I knew that. Well, good night, friend. Good night, Angel. But, Gil, if you're ever up for a game of dice, I roll with the best of them. I'm sorry. Sometimes I just can't help myself. I felt good about putting the Widow Casino in jail. I felt better about getting Angel out of jail. I felt bad about not grabbing Calamari. I felt worse about not grabbing Angel. I had a lot of feelings about a lot of things. I don't know what it is about females and murder. They just seem to get into bed together. At least that's been my experience. It was another Monday morning in Fish City. As usual, it looked like an exceptional day. This is my beat, and this is where I eat. Thank Neptune for pearls. In a turbulent sea of surprises, pearls is calm and peaceful. What's the matter with you this morning? This morning? Why should this morning be any different from any other morning in the history of mornings? Nothing ever changes. And I've decided to do something about it. My new menu. Well, crack my shell. A special named after me. The Krabby. Peppery tongue on crusty bread. <laughs> what are you laughing at, bub? Get a load of the Inspector Gill. Cornflakes and coffee. Okay, so I'm a little predictable. A little? Are you wearing a green tie today? Yeah. Well, then, it must be Monday, or Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday. So I'm consistent. Monotonous. Reliable. Boring. I've had it. I am bored, bored, bored. All aboard that's going aboard. Oh, <sighs> bored. Hey, I can be as unpredictable as the next fish. Excuse me, that's someone else's seat. Sorry, pal, I must have missed the brass plaque. I'd like a cup of coffee, beautiful. Cream and sugar or gorgeous? Uh, I mean black. <laughs> Cream and sugar, sugar. Didn't you end up eating steak through a straw the last time you called piles, sugar? Ahem. Nasty cop. I'd have that checked if I were you. But you're not me, and you're still sitting on my stool. Hey, if it means that much to you. Besides, I've got to go anyway. Au revoir, ma petite poisson. Oh, likewise, I'm sure. What did he do? He called you a small fish. But it sounded different somehow. <laughs> uh. 
Come on, catfish. I'm not getting any younger. Come to think of it, I'm not getting any. Patience, Goldie, patience. My third husband said I had the patience of a saint. Of course, that's when he dressed up like a monkfish and called me Mother Superior. <laughs> Thanks. Hubba, hubba, Detective Catfish. Are you going undercover tonight? No, Ted, I always wear a miniskirt and fishnet stockings on Mondays. Now that was my fourth husband. Hey, not so fast, fish cakes. I'm collecting for the Widows and Orphans Fund. And I can make you give till it hurts. Ask my fifth husband. You got any paper money? You know, green stuff? Dead presidents? Hey, I'm a cop, not Oysters Rockefeller. Listen up. I have a short announcement. That'll be the day. Put a lid on it, ladies. This is Inspector C. Bass, and he's more than just a pretty face. That's a pretty face? Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Brass Plaque. You two know each other? Yeah, we had breakfast together. You can scramble my eggs anytime, honey. Gil, meet your new partner. Partner? Who needs a partner? I've never had a partner before. Well, you've got one now. Bass just transferred in from Altoona. He's a sting expert. He's here to help you with the Dwarf Gorami gold bullion case. I don't need help. I'm this close. Good, good. He'll just get you that much closer. Now update him on the file. Uh, it's in this mess somewhere. I I'll find it later. Not necessary, Chief. I've been following this shipment since it disappeared from Fort Locks. Then I suppose you know when it's planning to appear in Fish City. Don't you know? I can see that you two will make quite a team. What is an orphans, huh? You came to the right fish. I've been an orphan since I was six. Oh, That's quite a want, doll. It's nothing compared to the feeling I get back. Pardon my sour grapes, but this cop had one cherry roadster while I drove a lemon. That and the fact that he tried to squeeze my tomato this morning made him not exactly the apple of my eye. What'd you do, win the lottery? Let's just say I know where to put my money. So how long you been drinking Pearl's coffee? Long enough to have a special named after me. Yeah? Well, a gal's got a right to add a new entree to her menu. <laughs> Not this gal. I've been her steady diet for five years. Well, maybe she'd like to try something a little bit richer and more filling. Reel in your recipe, buddy. You don't have the right ingredients. Turn left up here. Where are we going? The Shell Shack. It's just about happy hour for the snitches. Perfect. Maybe if we flash a little silver, we can pick up some info about the gold. Don't you just want to smack him? Who's the bass, boss? There's some new hotshot cop in town. Inspector Gill's bad enough, but at least he's predictable. I hate not knowing something. Uh, don't worry, boss. You get used to it. You don't have a brass plaque on this one, do you? Hey, Dimador, my drink is watered down. It's water brains like him who give us crustaceans a bad name. Hey, isn't that the sharp-looking bass who parked his keister on your stool at Piles this morning? My new partner. Charming, isn't he? Check out the threads. Yeah, where's he get all the clams? I don't know yet, but I'm gonna see what I can dig up. Hey, Inkblood, you got any skinny for sale? No, but I have Fatso here on the payroll. And if you don't get your filthy fins off me, I'll have him on you. Yeah, right. Okay, spread them. All ten of them. Nobody talks like that to the boss. Don't get sore, Muscles. Does your friend have any idea who I am? No introductions necessary. I recognize your kind. This is Calamari. Uh, he owns the joint. 
Sorry, my mistake. Let me buy you a drink. How kind. Why don't you make it around for the house? Hi, tall, striped, and handsome. I'm Angel. Hi, Angel. Are you here to show me your little piece of heaven? <gasps> yeah. You want to take the tour? Baby, I always travel first class. I'll say. The minute you swam in the joint, I could see you were a fish of distinction, a real big spender. Good looking, so refined. Say, wouldn't mm. you like to Pearl for breakfast, angel for dinner. I could get used to this cuisine. Sounds like your eyes are bigger than your stomach. This bass is swimming a little too tall for my taste. I suggest we bring him to his knees. But how? Angel. Booze? Gambling? Chocolate? I doubt if we could bring bass down with a chocolate bar. See, my mother had this problem. She would eat all my Halloween candy. <laughs> Sorry, boss. I thought I worked this through. I don't care if it's cash or candy. Find out what it is now. This smart bass has got to, to go. go. Extra! Extra! Read all about it! Dino Dick Duo! Crime was down. That was good. Bass was taking credit for it. That was bad. Chief Abalone seemed happy. That was good. But I didn't trust my partner, and that was bad. Because when a cop is trying to be that good, he's got to be hiding something that's bad. And what kind of a cop doesn't wear a hat? Then there was the time in Clearwater I was tailing these three spiny puffers. Ooh. Yeah, you know what they're like when they're cornered. Of course, my partner froze on me, so I had to take him out myself. Caught one in the left fin. That's this scar right here. Oh. Any questions? Just one. Are you single? <laughs> Tad, where's the file on... Seabass from the Altoona PD. Right here, uh, sir. I wouldn't bother reading it, though. They couldn't say enough good things about him. That makes two of us. If you won't be needing me for anything else, sir, I'd like to sit in with Inspector Bass and take notes. At two, Tad? Ooh! Looks like I've got a date with an angel. Give her my best. She's had your best. Apparently, it wasn't good enough. Uh-huh. Yeah. Tonight. Got it. Uh, Chief, about the dwarf Gurami bullion, it's coming down. 2,200 hours, dwarf warehouse, three months of work finally paying off. Good, good. Dwarfs at the wharf. And Gil, this time when the photographers show up, try to get in the picture. Aren't you being a little optimistic? All 150 bars of gold? You think they can move that much bullion at once? I've done my homework. Word is it's being driven out of Fish City tonight. Care to join our little roadblock? Of course, if you have a more pressing engagement. Don't worry, Gil, I can make both of them. Shoot, it's my mother's birthday. I've got to go call her. You, Dwarf Garamis, reach for the surface. We prefer to be called Little Garamis. I don't care if you prefer to be called Little Bo Peep. You're going to the big house. Uh, not unless it's a felony to transport chicken broth across state lines, uh, sir. Chicken bullion gill! But it was gold bullion. I knew it. Someone must have tipped them off. I thought this bus was watertight. It was, but we recently sprang a slow leak. Does that obnoxiously toothy smile mean you've got something on that loathsome sea bass? I think you'll be particularly pleased with what I dredged. 
Well, that's not exactly what I was hoping for, but this could be fun. <laughs> After my bust went flat, I was lucky I didn't get canned. I couldn't prove it yet, but I felt in my gut this bass was on the take. And that left me in the soup. Ahoy, pearls, my pearls, my beacon, my haven, my sacred divine shelter. She'd be on my side. New special, huh? Well, it's just like me, beefy. Hammy. Extra dressing. Cheesy. With lots of lettuce. Bologna. Gil, where are you going? You just got here. I'm suddenly feeling sick. They say chicken bouillon is good for that. <laughs> Gil? Sandy, there has to be something I'm missing. I know Bass blew the whistle on my bus, but when? The only time the guy was out of my sight was when he went to call his mother. <sighs> Didn't Bass say he was an orphan? Before the bus went south, Bass said he was calling his mother. Huh, only if he used a Ouija board. The whole borough was bonkers over Bass, and I was about to burst their bubble. Well, pop my pitch. Another winner. That bear sure can pick him. Too bad his brain wasn't around when you was picking husbands. It's too bad my brain wasn't around when I was picking husbands. Where's Abalone? He's having breakfast with Mayor Cod. Humble pie and chicken soup. I have to talk to you, Chief. After what I had to swallow this morning, you don't want to talk to me now. You don't want to talk to me later. Does he, co-workers? No, no he, he doesn't, doesn't want, want to talk, talk to you now, now or later. later. In fact, you won't want to talk to me until my retirement party, which, by the way, you won't be invited to. But, Chief, it's about Bass. I got called on the carpet this morning. So you are now my personal doormat. You got a problem with your partner? There he is. Deal with it. I hate to interrupt this male bonding, but we've got to jump up. Where? On top of a building. You want to be a little more specific? What? You want an address? Above the Shell Shack penthouse. Gil, Bass, get on it. Now! <laughs> This is Connie Coy from KELP, reporting live from the Shell Shack. We'll stay on the scene as the drama unfolds. What is it? What's happening? Oh, my goodness! Do you think he's really gonna jump? Even I haven't had Angel on the hood of a car. Why don't you stay I stay down, down here, here and wait for Abalone? Abalone. I'll tell him Bass, Bass and, and I went, went up to the top, to the top of the building. building. What is that, a whale? Let's do it. Come on. No need for both of us to go way up there. Why don't I stay way down here and coordinate things from this end? What's the matter, Bass? Your face is starting to match my tie. Nothing matches your tie, including your jacket. I'm just a little... Do I detect a touch of acrophobia? Psst, Connie, you want a scoop? Hey, Blubberbot, what are you doing out there? The boss wanted I should shine the ball on the end of the flight pole. It was trickier than it looked. Come on, I can't handle that lug by myself. Besides, don't you want to see the view from up here? Wrong answer, Bassy Babe. Come on, out of fish. Hey, Gil, your friend don't look too healthy. And they say you're not smart. Beautiful day, isn't it? The water's so blue. And look how tiny everybody looks. Way, way down there. If this mountain jumps, he's gonna take out a city block. Queasy stomach, Bass? I hear chicken bullion is good for that. I know you busted my bus. That gold bullion belonged to the feds, and now you've got it out on the street, thanks to your timely telephone tip to your mother. Hey, we're partners, aren't we? How does 50% of my 20% sound? Like 10%. Besides, that would put me on the take, just like you. All right, all right, I admit it. I'm dirty. I'm as dirty as that stain on your tie. 
Let's keep your confession on a professional level, okay? Oh, and to think I put him on my menu. Oh. Connie, did you get that? Don't worry, I'm sure they got your good side. Hey, Flatson, what about me? Let go, you boob, you're in water. My car! You mean Exhibit A? Here, Chief. And if you check the trunk, you'll find the rest of the bullion. Gold, not chicken. What tipped you off? Well, Chief, Bass told me he put all his moolah into his wheels. I started figuring maybe he meant that literally. You also knew exactly how many gold bars there were. How unlike you to be so sloppy. Get this bass out of my sight. Good work, you. Next time, I'll listen to you. Nah. Oh, what was that for? Being a good cop, a good guy, and just plain good. Well, some of us are just plain good because some of us are just plain bad. There are times when bad can be good. Angel, now that's bad. It was nice to see things swinging back to normal. And there I'd been worried that Bass had taken Angel to new heights. Little did I know. I'm sorry I made a mess of things, boss. No, contraire, my loyal underling. You far exceeded my expectations, and so did Inspector Gill. Ah, predictability. It's so predictable. Bass made his last transfer to Hattica. Last I heard, he put the warden on the worst dress list and ended up in solitary. But Bass will be fine. After all, it's all in the attitude. Or, should I say, altitude? You were pretty amazing up there. I'm pretty amazing down here, too. I know. That's why I've named a new special after you. The Hero Sandwich? What's all this? Can't a carp change? Well, just as long as there's still some of the old gill in there, too. Why don't you frisk me and find out? <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> you bet. In fact, I'll make it easy. You persnickety piranhas! Like you guys got discriminating palates? You'll eat your young, but you won't eat my sandwich. What's the matter with you, ain't you bad? Fish City's a swell place to live. And it ain't a bad place to eat, either. Trust me, I'm a cop. And if cops know anything, it's crime, coffee, and cuisine. You can go the fast food route at Weenie King, or you can dine the leisurely, old-fashioned way at Pearl's. It's simple, home-style cooking. Yep, Pearl's, my AM hangout. Good friends, good food, good coffee. Yo, you ever notice we're like an old married couple? Goodbye. We watch the morning news together, we eat breakfast together. Too bad the only ring I have to show for it is the one under your coffee cup. And the whole town's talking about the 33rd annual Miss Fish City Beauty Contest to be held this weekend, sponsored once again by Weenie King. Has it really been a year since that stupid, stupendous, senseless, sensational, muddy, smarvelous beauty contest? The contestants also include Miss Angel Jones, singer at the popular Shell Shack nightclub. Huh, like she doesn't get enough exposure on stage every night? Come on, Pearl, a classy chassis like that deserves a showroom. Yeah, and everyone in town has taken her for a test drive. Hmm.
she likes me? You got 20 bucks? Yeah. She likes you. Huh? Oh. Ooh. We could sure use a secretary around here. Hmm. Fish police, Goldie speaking. Oh, hi, Angel. Yeah, we saw it. You'll be wearing spandex in the swimsuit competition. Even money on Angel. It's for you. Hi, Angel. What can I do for you? Well, I'm soaking in the tub. You could come over and scrub my back. For starters. Uh, th th thanks for the offer, Toots, but I'm strictly a shower fish. And right now I could use a cold one. So, you ready for the beauty contest this weekend? I'm so excited. I've reserved you a seat. It'll mean so much to me, Gil, knowing you're behind me. Uh, gotta go, Angel. Break a fin. Are you using police department equipment for personal gain? Well, let's hope so. How much you in for, Chief? Not this year. Our beloved mayor volunteered my services as a judge. He's relying on my impartiality, my keen eye, and the fact that he's my boss. You've raised dorsal kissing to an art form, Chief. Don't forget who your boss is, Gil. Anyone else need reminding? No, we know who our boss is. Good. Could we please get back to work? Police work? Hey, what do you guys know about Weenie King? What don't we know, Detective Catfish? Whether it's mealtime or in between, you can't go wrong with a Weenie King Weenie hot dog. What in the name of Neptune is that? My Weenie whistle. The waltzing Weenie gave it to me when I was a kid. Oh, I'll never forget how she smiled, how she smelled, and that beautiful spotted tail. I love seeing her every year at the Miss Fish City Beauty Contest. Hot dog! Well, there may not be a contest this year. If it isn't the big, big weenie, weenie king himself. himself. Wow! WK to my friends, y'all. And I got a little problem here. My annual beauty contest been demoralized by disturbing and distasteful threats of violence. If the contest runs, I'll burn your buns. So if you dare, let the beauties beware. Do you have any enemies, WK? Well, no. Unless you count the two brothers I cheated out of the family fortune, my three ex-wives, or the 196 employees I laid off last week. Well, it's a start. Don't worry. That contest is a fish city tradition, just like your hot dogs and Pearl's apple pie. I'd lay down and die before I'd let anything happen to those beauties. My compliments, sir. Gil, looks like you and Catfish better keep an eye on those contestants. It's a dirty job, Chief, but somebody's got to do it. Tad, I need a file on, on every, every employee, employee who's, who's ever, ever worked, worked for Weenie King. I got it, sir. Please, guys, you got to let me tag along on this case. I was weaned on Weenie King weenies. Sure, kid. Now go. Catfish, I'd say this note was written by someone with a bad case of weenie envy. There I was, the one in charge of security, two weeks away from nailing any one of a hundred suspects with a thousand different motives, and the contest was eight hours away, and counting. I was lousy at arithmetic, but I knew that added up to trouble. wasn't kosher around here, and I wasn't talking hot dogs. Keeping the beauty contestants safe was taking up all my time. On the other fin, I was having the time of my life. But time was running out for the scum who was scaring these skirts. This is Connie Coy from KELP, reporting live from the Miss Fish City Beauty Contest. 
I'm standing here with Police Chief Abalone, one of tonight's judges. Chief, we've heard that the beauty contestants have been terrorized for the past week. What's the FCPD doing about it? For the last 48 hours, Inspector Gill has stayed right on top of the contestants. Uh, I mean, he's handling everything. Uh, I mean, it's under control, Connie. And now, a fish who needs no introduction. You all know him, you all love him. And apparently, somebody voted for him. Mayor Cod. Mayor Cod, any comments? You know, Connie, it's always been my contention that the finest-looking females in the entire ocean are our own homegrown fish city beauties. Actually, Your Honor, I was referring to the threats against the beauty contestants. Threats? What threats? They didn't mention me, did they? Hmm? But, did, did they? Well, 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 should I go home? Put the entire amount on Angel. Gee, a whole dollar. I've never seen one all by itself before. The slime suit contest is down the hall, fellas. Well, Calamari, anything you want to tell me about the Weenie King threats? The boss does not concern himself with hot dog eatery. Now, should you ask who pulled the stick up at Chez Poisson last year? I think what my associate means is, we're right to become privy to any information. Strictly hearsay, of course. I'd be happy to share it with Fish City's finest, or if necessary, with the police. Nobody gets in or out of this place without us knowing about it. Fitzig, you take the east exit. Chambers, take the west exit. Trujillo, check the basement. And Dabbleman, you go long. Hmm. Gives new meaning to the words lip service. Oh. Pearl, you're the last fish in the ocean I expected to see here. Obviously. Believe me, I'm only here to bring my baby brother dinner, not to condone this despicable display of female fish flesh. Now, where's Tad? Helping me out. Anything for me? Looks like you're getting enough already. Oh, hi, Pearl. You here to offer support? Why? Looks like your maiden form's already putting in overtime. I don't know you from Neptune, but I sure hope you win. Me too. Oh, I've never been past the reef before. Imagine touring the entire ocean for a whole year. <gasps> Did you say the winner goes out of town for a whole year? Sure, it comes with the crown. Just think, if I win, I'd... A whole year? As in 365 days and nights? I'll help Angel win. Allow me. Ah, oh, dames. Welcome, ladies and gentlefish, to the 33rd Annual Miss Fish City Beauty Contest. I'm Bob Sharks, your master of ceremonies. Now, let's give a big Fish City welcome to the Waltzing Weenie. Whether it's mealtime or in the tweenie, you can't go wrong with the weenie king weenie. Hot dog. <gasps> hey, you're not the waltzing weenie I remember. Don't tell anybody, but I just got this gig two weeks ago. Hope you have a good health plan. Yes. I'm Inspector Gill. I'm on the case. Uh, Bob will be right back. That reminds me, this lobster walks into a psychiatrist's office and... Thank you, Inspector Gill. And now, our parade of lovelies. Besides, 
Angela and I are just friends. Well, we're more than friends. Not much more, a little more, but not anymore. Oh, for the love of Pike, I just wanted to fix your suit. There, that's better. Oh. Now, Angel, you go out there and show them this dirty ocean has a beacon of grace, beauty, and purity. Float tall, float proud, float those babies. Gee, Pearl, you've been so nice to me. You're the sweetest, kindest. You're on, honey. Please, Neptune, don't let her talk. And to achieve my goal to become a nuclear physicist or a spokesmodel so that fish of every species may someday swim together in peaceful waters. How about that? Thank you, Tetra. How far do those fins go? A lot further than you will. Uh, and now, Angel, your question. How should Miss Fish City work to represent her public? Actually, I do my best work in private. But I also think Miss Fish City should be a beacon of grace, beauty, and purity in this dirty ocean. And if I'm crowned, I promise to float tall, float proud, and float those babies. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. While the judges hand in their decisions, let me remind you that if Miss Fish City cannot fulfill her obligations for any reason, the first swimmer up will take her place. And now, a word from our sponsor. Thank you, sir. You saved my beauty contest. You're a carp or your bird. Well, we're not out of the seaweed yet. There's still a terrorist fish floating out there somewhere. By the way, whatever happened to the old waltzing weenie? Her buns gave out. And the first swimmer up is... Detra Kineski! And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the new Miss Fish City is... Come on, Angel Baby, drive it home for Pearl. Angel Jones! The contest was over, but my job wasn't. The file had come through on WK's employees, and they were all as clean as my whistle, except one. Tad, get me the hate note sent to WK. Right here. Ah, uh, sir. Pinch me. I must be dreaming. Pinch me. Pinch me. Now I must be dreaming. Oh, Mr. Calamari, the Shell Shack is losing its headliner for a year. How do you feel about that? Angel's victory tonight has moved Mr. Calamari beyond verbal expression. That is to say, no comment. Why wasn't I warned this could happen before Angel entered this stupid contest? I could have fixed it. What am I supposed to do for the next year while she's out spreading goodwill? Have muscles go on stage and belly dance? Well, I did study modern jazz in my youth. Shut up, you idiot. You see anybody suspicious? Nope. Perhaps a terrorist prefers Dijon. <laughs> What are we smelling for? Inspector Gill says a combination of perfume and weenies. What? Oscar Mar de la Renta? <laughs> what are they sniffing for? Clues, sir. I'm following a hunch. Hey, things won't be the same without you, doll. I'll miss you too, Crab. Ladies and gentlefish, I think it's time to hear from the lady of the evening, my dear. 
I want to personally thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. Your friendship fills me up with such a warm feeling inside. It's hard for me to say goodbye. I'll miss you. And you, and especially you. More than words can say. So before I go, I'd like to give each and every one of you a big, wet kiss. We're getting close. I know she's here. I can feel it in my gut. Sure it's a she, sir? Sure, I'm sure. I've known she's from he's since I was 13, Tad. So what's next, sir? A weenie roast. Fish police! Freeze! Somebody grab that weenie! Waltzing weenie. <gasps> For 20 years, I played the waltzing weenie with relish. Till last month, WK told me my fins were shot and my shells were sagging, so he canned me. Well, what was I supposed to do? She couldn't cut the mustard anymore. <gasps> years of faithful service, and then I'm flushed down the turlet like a dead goldfish. Who here would put up with that? Not this fish, sister. Show us bottom feeder. What a creep. Oh. I'm taking the Weenie King Empire down. I'm going to sue your buns off. My card. We have an excellent case against him. Well, I'm going to press charges. My card. We have an excellent case against her. You're gonna have to get in line, W.K. The city has a few charges of its own against her. I hate to do this to you, Shelley, but the only waltzing you'll be doing for a while is with a warden named Wide Wanda. After what you drove this poor fish to do, I'm officially off Weenie King Weenies. No more Weenies! No more Weenies! Now, Shelley, <clears throat> well, perhaps I've been a little harsh. I tell you what, when you get out of Slammer, honey, you look me up and I'll put you right back on the payroll. Mm. I'll see you in five to ten. Stiff upper shell, kiddo. If my shells had been stiffer, I'd still be the waltzing weenie. Now, weren't you about to make that going far, far away speech? Winning is important, but... Not as important as losing. Gil, I almost lost you tonight. So what am I, Chop Squid? And my beloved benefactor, Mr. Biscotti Calamari. Whatever would I do without him? It's questions like that to keep me awake at night. And Pearl, you're the first female friend I've ever had. I couldn't bear to lose you either, or any of my friends. So. You are the new Miss Fish City. Float tall, float proud, and I forget the rest. What'd you do, Gil? Propose? Angel won the beauty contest. That was good. She gave the crown to Tetra. That was bad. At least Pearl thought so. We solved the Weenie King case. That was good. It turned out to be my beloved waltzing weenie. That was bad. At least I thought so. Let's see. If we enter Angel in the Miss Seven Seas contest, that's at least seven places she'd be gone to. Oh, and when you factor in lost luggage, it could be years before she comes back. Oh. Oh, here's one. Miss Polar Ice Cap. Exactly how far away is the Arctic Ocean? Pearl, you're being silly. Sensible. Stubborn. Supportive. Sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Say la vie. Close. Hey, it's 8 o'clock in the AM. 
order you a cup of salmon, they got places upstream for that kind of thing. You know, people got to eat off that counter. What's the matter with you? I wish I had a video camera. Life in Fish City can be a real crapshoot. You roll the dice, sometimes you win, and hey, sometimes you lose. But so far, I've been lucky. This fish had beaten the odds, which is why I knew something was about to go wrong. Suspicious? Paranoid? Neurotic? You betcha, that's my job. I'm a cop. And believe me, if anything was about to go down, the shell shack was always up for it. Speaking of being up for it... I've got you under my skin. I've got you deep in the heart of me. The Godfather? What's he up to? No good, that for sure. What does he want with calamari? Maybe to want to make some crime waves. Godfather, you honor my humble establishment with your immense presence. I don't believe I've had a pleasure. Who's she kidding? She's had every pleasure known to fish. Aren't you a breath of fresh water? Allow me. Thanks. I'm just all fins tonight. You're a lot more than just fins, my dear. My dear has a show to finish. To what do we owe the pleasure of your company? Just business. Nightclub business. The nightclub business is a swell business. Take it from my boss. I just might. But I'm feeling extremely generous tonight, so I think I'll buy the Shell Shack instead. And everything that comes with it. Oh, I'm sorry, the Shell Shack is not for sale. However, we are very touched by your offer. I've been known to make offers that can't be refused. Hey, only the boss makes offers that can't be refused. Nor does he respond well to threats of violence. Hey, I meant no disrespect. Let's take a short ride in my limo and we'll discuss this matter like two mature business mollusks. Just the two of us. I strongly suggest you decline the invitation. I can't back down, I'll lose face. You take that ride and you risk losing more than just your face. I'm ready when you are, Poisano. That's one bad fish, but I'm one bad cop. <sighs> if only I could get you to be bad a little more often. Hey, Angel, you know how it is. All I can offer you is good food and good conversation. How about some of that tonight? Sorry, Gilly. Late night date. I'd love to take a wave, Jack, though. Sure. <laughs> Fish police, Goldie speaking. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm just trying to visualize that. I tell you what, you go to the hospital. If they can't pry it loose, come on over and I'll take a whack at it. It'll be my pleasure. So they left the shell shack together, and that's the last I saw of them. What do you think, Chief? I don't care what it is, but you get something on the Codfather and fast. One corrupt invertebrate in this city is more than enough. Where's the file? Here you go, Chief. How does he do that? Looks like the feds have really been putting the heat on the Codfather in Atlantis. So start putting the heat on him here. Let's make him feel at home. Hiya, Pearl. Tried calling you last night. Did you get an answer? Uh, no. Hmm, then I guess I was out. Thanks. After being on call 36 hours straight, this is gonna hit the spot. It's what the doctor ordered. You're a doc? Okay, every time I raise my claw like this, 
I get this pain? Every time you do this? Whoa! Right, Doc! Then don't do that. If you wanted to go out last night, why didn't you call me sooner? Pearl, sweetheart, honey, lammy pie. I never know when I'm going to have a night off. Lammy pie? Whoa! <laughs> oh, for the love of... Let me guess. You're undercover as a stoolie. Check it out, fish. What better way to blend in with the day call? Okay, Mr. Master of Disguise, how long has the Codfather's limo been parked out front? All night, I think. I don't know. You can't exactly take in the sights with some perch sitting on your papers. I'm still working out the kinks in this thing. Has the Codfather been in here? No, not this morning. I got a bad feeling about this. Bet it took a lot of cash to buy this flash. Hey, open up! Fish police! Try the doors. Yeah, right. A limo like this would be left unlocked all night. <gasps> the Codfather. And it looks like somebody finally refused his offer. He's gone. Silk, thin made and monogrammed with a C. C for Codfather? I don't think so. Is that the Codfather? It was. Honey, I think it's going to put a dent in your lunch tray. <laughs> Trujillo, Greenstein, rope off the area. Parker, you check the alley. Yes, sir, Inspector. Guess we can rule out malnutrition as a cause of death. What's your call? I'm an ichthyologist, not a pathologist. But it looks like he was killed by a small caliber bullet to the thorax at close range. That's why there's not a lot of bleeding. Of course, it doesn't help much, because he's still dead. Uh, hey, Doc, I need you to sign off on the death certificate. Well, if that's all, Inspector, I'd like to go home. I could use some rest. With the Codfather dead, we'll all rest easier. The Chief told me to put the heat on the Codfather, but someone beat me to it with a real heater. There's only one guy that had both the motive and the opportunity. I was finally gonna nail Calamari. For 11 years, that squid had left a bad taste in my mouth. And that wasn't the only place he'd left bad taste. Woof! The boss ain't receiving company. I'm not company, Muscles. Open the door. The boss does not wish to be disturbed. Look, I just have a few questions to ask him. It'll only take a couple of minutes. I brought muffins. Oh, okay. But make it quick, Flat Fan. Blueberry, my favorite. I get rid of your barnacles upstairs, but you got a real brine shrimp problem on the foyer over here. The boss has a little pest problem. He's got bigger problems than that. Where is he? He's having breakfast on the veranda. At two in the afternoon? Hey, look, the boss had a late night. Not as late as the Codfather. File a suit against these clowns. There's no decoder ring in this box. Decode this, Calamari. Somebody gave the Codfather the silent treatment last night. Permanently, with a 22. And I think I know who. Do you? Mr. Calamari is grief-stricken and has no comment. I'll try to collect myself. Earlier in the evening, I met with the Codfather. We had business to discuss. <laughs> Afterwards, I came home and spent the evening alone, doing paperwork. How convenient. Excuse me. May I borrow your finkerchief? Looks like a finkerchief I found this morning, right next to the Codfather's body. You have no evidence. I have evidence. 
You have no motive. The Codfather was putting the squeeze on Calamari for the Shell Shack. You have no warrant. I have a, a warrant. Warrant, uh, sir. Hello. Ah, 22. Still warm, which is more than I can say about the Codfather. That can't be. Just a moment. Proof of ownership has yet to be established. Nah, this is the boss's piece, all right. Don't you remember I gave it to you on your birthday last year? I even put your initial on the grip. <laughs> the boss is so hard to shop for. Wait a minute. That gun was stolen from me weeks ago. I've been set up. Save it for the judge. I've waited 11 years to say three little words to you, Calamari. Why, Inspector, I didn't know you cared. You're under arrest. Let's do something legal. My client has rights. Sure he does. He has the right to remain silent. Anything he says can and will be held against him in a court of law. Isn't it great to be alive? Collaring Calamari was a dream come true for me, and a nightmare for him. Every hack and shutterbug in town was hanging around to see Calamari thrown into the pokey, and I was glad to oblige. Way to go, Gil! Nice collar, Inspector. <laughs> it's all in the starch. Well, 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 Mr. Calamari. How nice of you to stay with us. Won't you sign the register? Allow me. What's the sucks in cups? Gil, I always knew you had it in you. You did, Chief? Well, no, not really. But I'm happy you proved me wrong. You want the honors, my friend? Don't mind if I do. Uh, there are a few necessities I'll require during my stay. Which, I assure you, I will be bereaved. Shoot. Oh, sorry, poor choice of words. I'll need fresh steamed vegetables three times a day. A cappuccino maker, sterling flatware, none of that plated kind, and silk sheets on this abomination you call a bed. Silver? Silk sheets? Kiss my dorsal, deadbeat. Gilly, I need to see you. Okay, but I can only make it a minute. That's what happens when you get old. I'm awfully busy right now, Angel. It's not every day a cop gets to throw his nemesis in the slammer. Ooh, sounds fun. But whatever turns you on. Gilly, you've got to let Calamari go. He's not guilty. Angel, I might have been born at night, but it wasn't last night. I'm talking about last night. Calamari couldn't have killed the Codfather. He was with me. Funny. He told me he was home all night doing paperwork alone. Nice try, baby, but I think he would have noticed if you were around. No, I was helping him study. See, Cal had to quit school when he was 13. Actually, he burned it down. And it's always bothered him that he never got a diploma. It's true, I swear, every word. You better come up with something better than that, Angel. <sighs> I'll try, but that may take me a while. Calamari was behind bars and all should be right with the ocean. But something was very wrong and I couldn't put my fin on it. So I went in search of my favorite informant, the fish who knew everything about every soul alive or dead. Father Fluke, I need to talk. Ah, Gil, come to bear your soul, my son. Actually, I was hoping you'd have something to tell me about the Codfather. I know the feds have been all over him. The feds have been all over him for years, but the Codfather finally made one mistake. He forgot to pay his taxes, and the feds were just about to close in. Aha, so taking the shell shack away from Calamari could give him a new rinse cycle for his money laundering. Funny, now the feds are off his back, Calamari's off to prison, and it looks like the Codfather's too dead to enjoy it. Neptune certainly works in mysterious ways. Thank you, Father Fluke. It's been a religious experience.
Hi, Doc. I'd like to take a look at the Codfather's body. So would I. But the feds showed up and took possession of the body right after it got here. I never got a chance to see it. What about the autopsy report? No stiff, no report. Isn't that unusual? We're not talking your usual stiff. Just let me see the death certificate. How the hell does he do that? How does he do that so late at night? So, the doctor at the diner was Julius Kelp, M.D. Come on, Tad, let's make a house call. The guy picked a heck of a place to hang out his shingle. Float right in, gents. Only a few dollars for the time of your life. Tad, the address. 728 Dunes Boulevard. Excuse me, sir, isn't this a doctor's office? No, but whatever you got, we can cure it upstairs. As much as I wanted to see Calamari making license plates for me, I knew I couldn't let him serve time for a crime he didn't commit. I knew I had to dig up some clues, and a funeral seemed like the perfect place to start. It was a service fit for a king. There was music, flowers, a crying widow, all the things that make funerals so much fun. But something about the whole affair didn't seem to fit. And believe me, it wasn't Angel's dress. Woof! Thank you, Angel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, today we joined together to put to rest a, a great octopus. <laughs> his girth was only matched by the size of his heart. And as we put him to the sand, what else can I say but that I'm sure he's gone to a better place? Yeah, right. Amen and amen. me, Inspector. You didn't look that clever. Looks can be deceiving. You wanted the feds to think you were dead, so you murdered yourself and set up Calamari to take the fall. Too bad your big ego wouldn't let you stay dead and away from your own funeral. You're under arrest, Codfather. You! Sorry, Detective. Maybe it wasn't my funeral, but it looks like it's gonna be yours. I-32, that's I-32. One more time in Espanol, I-32. <laughs> now remember, this is for the Humble Figure Deluxe Party Pack. Hey, glad you could join us, Inspector. Hope you're not too winded. Oh, fancy meeting you two again. Yeah, it was an ingenious plan, don't you think? Everybody played their part perfectly, and now it's your turn to play the dead cop. Get up! They've got the drop on you, Inspector. I don't care. What do you mean? I'll take you with me. You wouldn't do that. You're not that stupid. You'd be amazed at how stupid I am. What's it gonna be? Ah, drop him, boys. Like I was saying, you're under arrest for forging a death certificate, planting false evidence, resisting arrest, and ticking me off. Freeze, federal agents! Forget it, guys. You don't think that federal agent line is gonna work on me, do you? What are you talking about? Look, Doc Croker fell for that phony fed bit, but I'm a trained professional. 
Well, you're going to be an ex-professional in a minute. Oh, yeah? Yeah, pal. The Codfather's our collar and... Yeah, right. Look, Barnacle Butt, if you know what's good for you, you'll... Ah. Hey. Let me guess. Either you guys are really slow or you really are federal agents. I was afraid of that. When you're a cop, you never brag about the one that got away. The taste of it gnaws away at your gut like a weak old burrito. We all know how that feels. Yeah, well, at least I do. Somehow I knew I'd see the Codfather again, and I was looking forward to it because next time I would really bury him. All right, Calamari. You're free to go. Oh, dear. Having a bad day, Inspector? You're free, boss. What a horrible experience. I feel like I was in the slammer. You were, you pea brain. You camped out in front of my cell all night. Well, I just wanted to be near you, boss. Was that such a horrible thing? No, but your snoring was. This gross miscarriage of justice will be addressed. You may be certain. False imprisonment, Inspector Gill? We're gonna sue your scales off. Wait a minute, you should be thanking me. I could have let you fry. Oh, my mistake, Inspector. I just spent an agonizing 24 hours in this torture chamber without even the barest comfort. And I owe it all to you and your incompetence. You were lucky this time, but wise up, wise guy. It always feels good to do the right thing, even if it's for the wrong fish. I hated setting Calamari free, but he didn't belong in jail. At least, not for this case. <sighs> Perhaps another time, another place. It's life when you just gotta ask yourself, why? Why am I here? What am I doing? And why can't you get a good chocolate soda anymore? It was going to be one of those days. Hey, tall, green, and handsome. And how's my favorite civil servant? Don't ask, honey. And don't ask why you shouldn't ask. I guess now would not be a good time to tell you my folks are coming to visit for a couple of days. That's nice. Your parents? Yeah, and they're really looking forward to finally meeting you since last time they were here you wouldn't take off work. I was being held hostage. The police patched in a direct line you could have called. Sorry, I was hanging upside down by my tail at the time. Well, it didn't exactly score any points with Daddy. Mm, okay, barring any unforeseen terrorist activities, I'll try to be more available. Thank you. So, what about taking all of us to the Shell Shack Wednesday night? Since when do you want to go to the Shell Shack? The folks have heard so much about it, they want to experience it. Fine, I'll make sure it's an experience. And maybe you could get tickets to the Snappers opening game on Sunday? Daddy's a real baseball fan. Consider it done. And one more thing. Would you mind wearing something a little more, um, well, a little less... What's wrong with this? It's old, it's wrinkled, it's out of style, it's ugly, and it's brown. And who is this? Uh, Ruby? Pearl, you imbecile. Whatever. Go on. The dame owns Pearl's Diner, has the hats for Gil. She also has a little snot-nosed brother named Tad. Just happens to work for this Gil character. Very good. Angel, I can see why Gil works up quite a sweat over this one. But this one works for me. Next. Detective Catfish. Good. Detective Catfish undercover as a lamppost. Next. Hey, that catfish really is good. No, you idiot. That's Goldie. Right. Gil's secretary. Broad's been married more times than I've been in jail. <laughs> Excellent. You're improving. So, now he knows the players. But what happens when he speaks to one of them? Watch and listen. Come on, Calamari. Those aren't suspenders, and you know it. Now hear that voice and repeat after me. The scales on whales are mainly on their tails. The scales on whales are mainly on their tails. Oh, my. Very impressive. Again. I don't know why you're going to such trouble. You're successful in all your endeavors. Extortion, murder, blackmail, gambling, arson. Yes, but finding Bill here has inspired me to a new low. I may not have Inspector Gill on my payroll, but when I'm finished with Bill, I'll have the next best thing. Catfish. Ted. 
Chief Abalone. Crab. The scales on whales are mainly on their tails. Again? Forget it. I quit. Find yourself another cop. Bill, look around. It appears I have everything a professional criminal could possibly want, but I am missing that one elusive element. Information. Information is power, and with my plan and your genes, you will become my source of power. I hate to be an I told you so, but I told you so. You can't turn this carp into a cop. A squid can dream, can he? The scales on whales are mainly on their tails. The scales on whales are mainly on their tails. The scales on whales are mainly on their tails. By George, he's got it. So I'm finally going to meet Pearl's parents. But what does that say about Pearl and me? And what are her parents going to say about what I haven't said to Pearl? Maybe I'm making too much out of this. Holy mother of Pearl, you're going to meet her parents? Relax, Gil. We can always arrange another terrorist attack. Huh. It'd be best to wear a marriage-proof vest. I don't think my folks are expecting Gil and Pearl to get married. Of course, they have cleared the month of June. Gil, catfish, in my office, now! What's up? You got a brief, Chief? I told you, never rhyme in my office. Sorry. You two ever hear of the 1897 trawlers? They were the worst team in baseball history. Yeah, my great-granddad told me they were so bad they only lasted a year. And only made one baseball card. Whew. It's got to be worth a stash of cash. Uh, sorry. It just so happens that very baseball card is floating into our fair city to be auctioned off later this week. And you two get to babysit it while it's on display at the Snapper Stadium. Gee, thanks, Chief. That stadium is huge. It's going to be impossible to secure. I know that. That's why every night the card will be transferred to the vault at the Oceanic Bank. And one more thing. The fewer who know about the transfer, the better. If this card is going to be stolen, let it be stolen while it's in some other city. You won't lose face because we're on the job. Plastic surgeon or no plastic surgeon, do you really think you can pull this off? Gosh, boss, it's eerie. Oh, it's genius. No, it's Gil. Inspector Gil. It was another day, but I still had the same old questions about life. I even had a few new ones. How come the news guy asked me why I needed another paper? Why did my dry cleaner give my best green tie to another mug? And what is dry cleaning anyway, and who really needs it in an hour? How many bowls of cornflakes can you eat in one day? Is this a quiz? Are you still hungry? Still? Uh, yes. Okay. Is there something in the water this morning? Everyone's acting so weird. If you ask me, the whole ocean's gone crazy. It says here that the snapper's owner, George Steinfluke, is willing to pay a fortune for this 1897 trawler's baseball card. Criminy, this guy's got take me written all over him. I got some old bottle caps, I'll sell him. I could clean up. <laughs> what? No banana? I gave you the last one with your first bowl. This is my first bowl. Oh, no. I see what you're doing. Insanity will not get you out of meeting my parents. <laughs> Am I missing something here? You passed pearls with flying colors. Now for your next test. I want you to go inside the station and bring me back all the files they have on me. What if they ask to see an ID or something? This isn't a library. You swim in, you swim out. You're a fish with a mission. Just be Gil. Sounds pretty simple. Precisely. Who are you, and what have you done with the real Gil? What? You've never been in before 9.30. Uh, Goldie, right? Uh, Goldie, I just, uh, came in to, um, give you some... Typing. That's cute. I never knew you could be this funny before lunch.
we cool about tonight? Tonight? The transfer of the card. Oh, that. Yeah, I'm cool. Cool. Are you uh, cool? I invented the word. Uh, you don't anticipate a problem with this card? Nah. You know how the chief gets a crack up his shell with these kinds of assignments. Besides, if you and I can't transfer one teensy tiny baseball card from the stadium to the Oceanic Bank Vault, then we're nothing but chum. Right. Hey, Cat, we still on for tonight? <laughs> you are one fried fish. What is so funny? How did it go? Like a dream. So where's my file? Your file is a file cabinet. I couldn't exactly hide it under my coat. Cabinet, huh? I'm glad I'm keeping the FCPD busy. Now, did you pick up anything interesting? Nay, hey, nothing worth repeating. Inspector Gill! A detective catfish! Affirmative visual ID! Proceed! Here you go, Mr. Lycan. She's all yours. Yep, sir. This baby is gonna sleep safe tonight. We're out of here. Let's book. Let me familiarize you with our XJM 11 Dash Omega surveillance system. Mr. Lycan, this is truly fascinating, but. Now, over here, you can have your Master Cam, Mini Cam, Maxi Cam, Micro Cam, and Can Cam. It's your everyday camera disguised as a can. This particular one is creamed corn. Of course, it also comes in French style green beans, okra. <laughs> Hey, Pop, how about a little something extra for the effort here? I drove extra careful for you, you being Pearl's dad and all. I could have hit that bus, you know. We didn't have to go around it. <laughs> ah, forget it. Won't you, laddie? Though I know you're perfectly swell, that my heart belongs to Crud Daddy. Cause Crud Daddy, he treats it so well, I sure am looking forward to the Snapper's opening day. I can smell those weenies already. Speaking of weenies, sweetheart, where is this inspector of yours? I told you he's going to be late. He's working on a case, but he'll be here. Right, Tad? Oh, yeah. Inspector Gill wouldn't miss this for anything. I'm sure Gil is well worth the wait, dear. Oh, he is. He's sweet, he's intelligent, he's caring, he's got his fins all over Angel. It's, uh, Dad, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, I'm sure it's part of an ongoing investigation, and I'll just let him know we're here. Why don't I, uh, come over later and we'll shed some scales together? Uh, sir, excuse me, sir. Not now, kid. Uh, sir? What? My folks. Dinner? Meeting for the first time? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I'd love to meet him. Uh, what does he think he's doing? I told you this was a mistake. Hi, Gil. Hey. A kiss would have been nice. Gil, these are my folks, Mr. and Mrs. White. Hey. So, we finally meet. How do you do? We've heard so much about you. <laughs> Hope you haven't heard too much, because once Pearl gets a couple of belts under her apron, there's no telling what she'll say, right, baby? Excuse me, but could I speak to you, Inspector? It is a matter of the utmost importante. Hold your water, Toots. I'll be right back. Well, I like him. This is great. No one suspects a thing. Why'd you pull me away? You're getting sloppy, and it's making me nervous. I don't like being nervous. Hey, boss, I hate to interrupt you and Gil, but Gil just walked in, so maybe Gil should leave. I don't know what kind of game you're playing, mister, but if you think you can come back to the table after that performance, you're out of your tiny little brain. What are you talking about? I just got here. Well, you're just leaving. Ah, oh, this would have been a good week to stay home. I couldn't sleep, so I swam around all night. Nothing was adding up. 
everywhere I went, I seemed to have been there before and insulted everyone in the process. Something smelled and it was up to me to sniff it out and track it down. <laughs> I could sure use some coffee. I didn't bother stopping at Pearl. She isn't exactly talking to me. Neither is anyone here. Gil, my office, now. Morning, Cat, Chief. The taller baseball card was stolen last night. That's impossible. That bank had more cameras than a bus full of Japanese tourists. Wh what about that vegetable camera thing they had on? Oh, it was on all right. Care to see? You betcha, Chief. Anyone we know? You tell me. Hit the lights. I mean, it was me, but that wasn't me. It kind of, sort of was, Gil. No, it wasn't. It, it, he was taller. He had fatter. Uh, he was left fin, for Pike's sake. I don't care what fin he used. He used your face. I'm sorry, Gil. I'm going to have to place you under arrest. This is ridiculous. My face didn't leave my sight all night. What am I saying? You're gone. Bad. Sorry, Sam. Book him. I'd rather relive my third honeymoon than see this happen. Plain and simple, I had to get out. Somewhere out there, there was a carp with my face on him. Hey, am I glad to see you two. You gotta believe me, I didn't steal that baseball card. We know, uh, sir, that's why we're here. That dude, shrewd. But you're right, he used his left. And then I remembered how friendly you were with Angel, uh, sir. That wasn't me either. How friendly was I? Well, let's put it this way, sir. My sister burned your stool at the diner. Ow, I gotta get this guy. How? If I find the card, I find the card. Where do you think he'll try to unload it? We don't have any high rollers like that in Fish City. Wait a minute. Aren't the Snappers in town? Yeah, tomorrow's opening day. And the Snappers' owner is, is George Steinflug, the, the richest baseball, baseball card collector in the ocean. ocean. The other Gil is going to contact Steinflug. I just know it. And I'm going to be there. You guys are the best. I was on the lamp. Inspector Gill's parents agreed to be interviewed on the condition that they remain anonymous. We contacted them in their modest home at 2241 Starfish Lane, just off Coral Boulevard, next to the A&P. He was always a strange fish. He got that from his father's side. Don't bring my family into this. You're the one with the uncle who covers himself in tinfoil and sings Melancholy Baby on the roof. He's a performance artist. Artist schmartest. No sign of Bill, boss. He cleaned out of his hotel room this morning and took everything except the newspaper. Damn, that piece of Pond's scum impersonator double-crossed me. This is a disaster of biblical proportions. We've got to find Bill before the police do, or else he'll drag us into this. I always hate being implicated. Wait a minute. We just may have a chance. Well, well, take me out of the ball game. I wanted to catch this impersonator red finned, but going to the stadium was dangerous. Everyone was after me, even though they should have been after him because he looked like me. So I had to find him before they found me. Oh, when this was over, I was really going to need a vacation. Give me one of those snappers, Caps. 
you. I can explain, Chief. Everything I've told you about the imposter is the truth, Chief. And he's here now, headed for the owner's box. He's trying to sell the trawler's baseball card to Steinflu. Look, there he is. Don't just float there. Go get him. Can I have one of those pennants? Can I? Can I? I want one of those flag things that Bill is selling. Bill? Fish police. Under arrest. Two to one odds say our guy's the one on the right. Or the left. Mm, forget it. All bets are on. I'll tell you who's who. Honey, this isn't a buffet. Pearl, surely you can tell us apart. Gee, I don't know. I'll try. Why don't you both make a date with me, and whoever breaks it, I'll know is the real Gil. Cops, cops, they all look alike to me. Fish is fish! You mean to tell me that no one here can tell the real Gil from the imposter? All right, if you're me, show us some ID. Oops. <laughs> Wrong answer, copy card. My badge, Sandy, is in Abalone's desk drawer. Book him, Catfish. Sorry, Steinfluke, this isn't for sale. And whoever you are, I'm booking you for everything I can think of. He made me do it. Calamari, did you really think you'd get away with this? Get away with what, Inspector? You don't have one shred of actual evidence, do you? How about this kisser, for starters? What can I help but if this poor, misguided soul chose to impersonate you? Besides, everyone knows that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I can't pin anything on you right now, but when I do... Gee, we're all a quiver, Inspector. Jill, it was incredible. He even had that cute little birthmark that you have right on your... Bill, the imposter, was taking my face to some place where it would do him no good. Sand Quentin. But I still had to face Pearl. May I help you, sir? Pearl, honey, I'm sorry. I know I struck out with your parents again. I, I, I hope you'll give me another chance. Not too soon, of course. Very funny. <gasps> what was that for? Next time some two-bit fish comes into town wearing my face, I want to make sure that someone can tell us apart. Someone? Okay, you. Maybe we better do that kissing thing again. That was good, but I'm not quite sure I could pick you out of a lineup yet. I'd finished my shift three hours earlier, but a good cop is always open for business. It figures, Fish City's crime central. If it's illegal, immoral, or illegitimate, it was probably conceived at the Shell Shack. These squids knew where to go, but what were they looking for? Uncle Calamari! Uncle Calamari? So, Calamari's three nephews were in town. That was bad. But I was on my way to Pearl's and my usual bowl of cornflakes, and that was good. Gil, if I bought a new dress for some special occasion, like, oh, say, the Fish Police Charity Ball, <laughs> what color would you suggest? Uh, I think you'd look great in green. Yeah, green. It's not that I personally want to go, but it is for the police charity fund, and they are raffling off that new Barracuda GT sports coupe loaded with everything down to the little Christmas tree air freshener. Of course, this whole discussion is pointless since no one's asked me to go. Ow! 
Uh, Pearl, would you uh, like to go to the Fish Police Charity Ball with, uh, I guess, me? Oh, I don't think so, Gil. I'm awfully busy. No, oh, all right. If I say no, you'll be pouting around here for days. So to sum this up, I can't order you to go to the ball, but I can strongly encourage you to buy tickets. Any questions? No, no, no questions, questions, Chief. Ante up. If I'm not taking money, I'm taking names. Put me in for two, Goldie. So who's the lucky lady? Well, after giving it a lot of thought, I decided to, to invite, invite Pearl. How did you find out so fast? Did your sister send up smoke bubbles? Hardly necessary, sir. She's had it planned for weeks. What do you want, Calamari? Is this a business call, or did you just come over to flirt with me? Nah, they're here to buy tickets for the charity ball, right, fellas? We can book you a nice table, or we can just book you. As a matter of fact, we are here to buy some tickets. You see, boys, be kind to the local flat fins. You never know when you might need their assistance. Lay a tentacle on that dough, and you're an appetizer. Watch the accusations, detective. Yeah, we're respectable business fish, and we expect to be treated as such. Who's the slime in training? How rude of us to neglect introducing my clients' nephews. Richie, Buddy, and Elvis. Well, with names like that, they deserve our respect. Now you've got what you came for, hit the water. In that case, see you at the ball. Don't worry, Chief. I've been keeping an eye on those three. They haven't done anything. We run a full-scale stakeout, and Sharkster will be all over us. Assuming that he finds out. They'll never know I'm there, Chief. Then I don't want to know you're there either. Flounders in the night One-sided glances wandering in the night May I freshen that drink for you, Inspector Gill? Oh, you can do anything you want to it, beautiful. Have we... My, how quickly they forget. It's me, you yutz! Catfish! Call me Kitty. Wow, when you go undercover, you really stuff the mattress. You pick up any tips on our three friends? I've been picking up plenty of tips, but nothing that'll help us on this case. Uh, thanks, Kitty. I'll have another soda. Hey, how's it shaking, sweet cheeks? Swell. So, Inspector Gill, how do you like my new waitress, huh? <laughs> I ain't picked them myself. Hey, it's obvious you know a fine fin when you see one. Yeah, that I do. Now run along, Kitty. Table four is looking, uh, kind of lonely. <laughs> you gotta stay on top of these skates every minute. Hey, treasure chest. Where are the pretzels? The name's Donna. Call me treasure chest one more time and I'll make you sorry you're a squid. What'd I say? Inspector Gill, we trust this is a visit of a strictly personal nature. It is, unless you feel like confessing something. Why? Have you joined the priesthood, Inspector? If it would put you behind bars, I'd consider celibacy. Please, I'm trying to run a respectable joint here. Oh, so he's taking over things, Calamari. My nephews were sent here to learn the family business, Inspector. Richie here has impressed me with his initiative and vision. I've made him my night manager. And Buddy and Elvis will continue to do what they do best. Why don't you go do the time cards, Richie? How? Donna? Yes, sir? Show Richie how to do the time cards. Yes, sir. And while you're at it, I'll have a double decaf espresso cafe au lait cappuccino half-calf with 12 sugars. Yes, sir. Inspector, it's always a pleasure. Hi, Gil. Hi, Angel. Sit down. Take a load off. Thanks. You're so 
charitable. You know, I've noticed that lots of cops are charitable. While you're all so charitable, you throw a charity ball. Isn't that sweet? Uh, I majored in sweetness at the police academy. I've had a lot of experience with charity. You know, giving. And I give just about anything to go to this ball. Anything. And everything. And she says cops are charitable. What kind of bum would ask you on such short notice? You would, Gil. Oh, yes, I accept. Now, Gil, in the beginning of your fantasies, when I'm still wearing a dress, what color is it? Green. Green. I think I can work with that. Mm, see you, Gilly. Looks like we got some weather coming up, huh, Goldie? Who died and made you meteorologist? You're being mugged. Oh, no, I'm not. I, I got, got him. I got him. Good thing I came along, huh? Oh, yeah. Death. Slow, bloody, painful death. What happened to you? Goldie was mugged on the way to the bank. I had the guy in a suction lock, and then Twinkle Fins here showed up. I heard screaming. The mugger was screaming. What did they get, Goldie? My lunch money, a few credit cards, my favorite pen, and all the money from the police charity ball. All of it? This is terrible. I'll say, I love that pen. I had to recover that money and nail our mugger before the charity ball or the whole FCPD was going to have Roe on its face. We didn't have much to go on, but fortunately we had two eyewitnesses who had been trained to ID suspects. He was huge, with these clammy... Ah, skinny little pencil neck was. He weighed about as much as my right fin. He had bushy eyebrows. Well, actually, there was only one. He's an ugly, ugly fish with huge teeth. He was actually kind of cute. But it was dark and inky. Luckily, it was over in a flash. Sort of like my second husband. What have you got, Harvey? That's the guy. Goldie, why don't you work with Harvey and try to come up with something with more of a face? Well, the eyes were a little more uneven. Yeah, yeah, have your fun. You're such pigs. How's it going down at the Shell Shack? Nothing yet, but we better crack this charity case soon before I start to enjoy this. Where are the Three Stooges? Shopping. Something about spending their first paycheck, which bothers me a little. Why? Well, payday's not till Thursday. I say it's time we pay those boys a visit. Uh, why don't you slip into something that doesn't require a matching bag? Here's the work schedule for next week. I computed our average bar consumption and adjusted the order. I also took the liberty of reorganizing the kitchen staff, which will save us 100% in payroll. Well, aren't you the little helper? You know, that gives me an idea. Yes? I could use a double espresso right now. Yes, sir. With a twist. I'm sorry, Inspector Gill, but your watch must be off. We don't open for a few more hours. I'm not here to dance. I'm here to get some answers. That would depend on the questions. I have nothing to hide. I'm an open book. It's not your book we're reading. We want to take your nephews downtown for questioning. What have they done? I don't know. Maybe they can tell me. I won't allow it. You've got no warrant, no probable cause, no evidence. You're just fishing. Well, a man's got to have a hobby. Or if the officers want to talk to my nephews, let them. It might be good experience for them. The neckline is too low. This dress is one of a kind. And I have two of a kind. I don't want the entire ocean staring at, thank you very much. 
I must say, I certainly do this dress justice. Honey, what you do to this dress is positively illegal. Angel! Pearl, how nice to see you. So are you buying this dress for a special occasion, or is the diner taking reservations now? As a matter of fact, I'm attending the Fish Police Charity Ball this evening. What a coincidence. So am I. Who's your date? Your brother? No. Who's yours? The Fifth Precinct? If you must know, I'm going with Gil. Gil? Gil! So, you did a little shopping. What's it to you? Spending your paycheck? You don't have to answer that. No law says a guy can't spend his hard-earned cash. True, but isn't payday Thursday? You don't have to answer that. Uncle, Mr. Calamari gave us a bonus, okay? A little something to get us set up in town. Ooh, good answer. So, you guys enjoying your time in Fish City? He did it. Uh, me? It was him! You would rat on your own, brother. Any further questions, Inspector? Get them out of my sight. Okay, I've got Pearl at the ball from 7 to 11, then she takes the midnight shift at the diner. Angel gets off work at 10, which means I've got her from 11 on and on. It's going to be close, but I think I can pull it off. Inspector Gill. Gill, honey, how are you? G great, Pearl. W what's up? Nothing. I'm just so excited about the ball. So am I. <clears throat> H hold on, Pearl. Gill. Gill, honey, it's me. Sorry to bother you, but I'm just so excited about the ball. I had to talk to you. Why, well, I'm glad you called. Look, hold on a second. Uh, Pearl, pick you up at... Eight. I'll meet you there. I'll be waiting on the front steps. Sure. Eight it is. Uh, hold on. Uh, uh, Angel, uh, let's talk about the ball. Okay. I've got the night off from the shell shack, so meet me there at eight. I'll be waiting for you on the front steps. Bye, Gil. Gil! Yes, sir? The mayor's gonna put my dorsal in a sling if we don't recover the charity money. What have you got? Well, whoever it is, it's someone who's trying to make a name for themselves. Ripping off the police is not something we would take lightly. So you think they knew the money was in Goldie's purse? If you were going to mug somebody, would Goldie be your first choice? Good point. I think it's one of Calamari's nephews, and after all, where there's ink, there's squid. But after talking to them, I think we can eliminate Buddy and Elvis. How come? They're idiots, Chief. I think Richie's our squid. Do you have enough to nail him? Not yet. Well, do it and do it fast. We can't let something like this happen right under our bivalves. Make that right under our window, Chief. Someone's driving off with a barracuda. The ball was only an hour away, and without the barracuda, the only thing we'd have to raffle off was our pride. Somebody was intent on making the police look bad, and nobody loves to show up the cops more than Calamari. Maybe, maybe just a little more than you, imbecile. You know, Calamari, I always figured you for the clip-on type. What are you doing here, Inspector? I think you know. Actually, I don't have a clue. And neither do you, I suspect, or you wouldn't be loitering in my office. Sorry. Uh, here's tonight's receipts. Donna, dear, I wonder if I could trouble you for a double decaf. I'm sorry, but we're out. Out? How is that possible? Well, you put Richie in charge of ordering. And I put you in charge of training him, didn't I? Well, I'll go order some right now. Excuse us, Inspector, but we don't want to be late to the ball. That would be rude. Well, we don't want to be rude, do we? Sorry we can't help you, Inspector. Hey, kitty, I got some good news. You got the rest of the night off, I need a date to the ball, and you're the lucky fish. Thank you, but I could use the tips. Hey, play your cards right, and I'll make it worth your while. Oh, I don't know, Richie. 
table for one? Are you nuts? He's nibbling the bait. Yeah? Well, it's not your bait. He's nibbling. Look, just go to the dance with him. All right, but I get to leave. I don't know the answer. You don't know the question. Something tells me I'm about to. Do you think Richie could have stolen the money and the Barracuda? That ink blot can order coffee, much less drive a stick shift. I said you were smart. It's 8.15. He's late. He'll be here. Now, you remember what to do. I slap him, and then you slap him, and then we tell him something. We tell him that we're not a couple of bimbos that he can play off each other. The slapping I can handle, but that speech is going to be a bit of a stretch. We gotta stick together, Angel. Now, where is he? I knew it was somebody who was trying to impress Calamari. That led me to Richie, Buddy, and Elvis. But they had an alibi that would stand up in court. Eyewitnesses? No, stupidity. I was looking for someone smart. Someone capable of putting up a good ink screen. Then why are you looking at me? Everybody knows I'm just a waitress around here. Uh, wrong answer, doll. I saw you tape Calamari's door open. Then you said Richie was too stupid to drive a stick shift. Well, how would you know the car was a stick shift? Good guess. Maybe, but you're not a guessing kind of gal. Must have been hard to keep being ignored while Richie was being promoted. It's enough to push any fish over the edge. If you can't join them, beat them. Look, with this money and the dough from the charity fund, we could be dipping our dorses in the Mediterranean before anybody knew a thing. Sorry, no dice. Then I guess I should give you this. That's far enough. You should have taken me up on the offer. Who knows? I might have been worth it. Goodbye, Inspector Gill. Well, that turned out nicely. Ooh, we're gonna have to make a little pit stop before I take you downtown. Five more minutes. You keep saying that. Well, maybe Gil has a reason for all this. Maybe asking us both was just a miscommunication problem. Maybe I should just forgive him and let it be done with. Pearl, I'm so sorry. You got the Barracuda back. You solved the case. You incredible, stinking, rotten jerk. <laughs> you poor thing. Angel. Okay. Sorry. So what do we do now? Angel, it is possible to have fun without a man. Pearl, that explains a lot about you. Here's your Barracuda, Chief. The charity money's in the trunk and the culprit is in the front seat. Donna? Surprised that a woman could pull this off? I've been trying to tell you for years that I could handle more than waitressing, but you wouldn't listen. Well, I am now. Shockster, follow Miss Donna down to the station and see that she gets bailed out. We could use a fish like her. I bet you could. And I guess you'll get your chance in seven to ten years. A lot of excitement, huh, baby? <laughs> but I'm sure it's not half as exciting as you'll be later. <gasps> Sorry, Chief. I guess I blew my cover. Well, Chief, I guess since Inspector Gill recovered the Barracuda, we can raffle it off now, right? Why not? And the winner is... Me? I won! I actually won! Hey, what hammerhead parked this boat here? This is a no parking zone. A hundred cops here, and nobody's given out tickets. My car! You totaled my car!
You drive like you walk. Sideways. Oh, so it's I was a hero for cracking the case, and that was good. Pearl and Angel were gonna hate my guts for a while, and that was bad. In the end, the scales of justice always seem to balance out, and that's good. But I was stuck with a $60 tux, and that's bad.